All right, here we go. Um, so we're back to part three of implementing or simulating, I should say, a quantum computer in Rust. <clears throat> uh, so the goals here were uh, to implement a quantum computer, quantum computing simulator in Rust in order to help us better understand quantum mechanics and quantum phenomena. Um, the kind of tactical thing that I want to get to in this series is simulating Shor's algorithm for factoring numbers. So this is this is the thing that would make well one of the things that would make quantum mechanic or quantum computing um, a game changer would be being able to factor large numbers and do that efficiently. Uh, it would do things like break RSA encryption and uh, let us solve a lot of uh, sort of complex numerical problems that we can't solve with classical computers we could use quantum computing for. Of course, uh, real world quantum computers right now are still limited to, I think, only <clears throat> like tens of qubits. Um, I could be wrong, but I, it's, it's changed, but I don't think it's like way beyond that. Um, and then the last thing I'm interested in doing, and I haven't thought through too much of, of how to do this, um, I'll probably get to it after kind of the rest of the core logic is how to visualize the quantum circuits um, to help explain and demonstrate what's going on, especially to, to people who might not be as comfortable with, say, uh, matrix algebra, uh, linear algebra, or working with complex numbers. Um, so we'll at some point need to think through how to visualize um, said quantum circuits. Um, okay, so that's the overall goal for the series. Um, the specific goal last time was to implement quantum circuit, uh, and quantum circuit would be the struct um, that encapsulates the idea of a quantum circuit. Uh, and so we should be able to do things like build up a quantum circuit uh, from its constituent gates, uh, we should be able to run a quantum circuit. We should be able to measure the output of a quantum circuit. Um, and as often happens in uh, programming, uh, especially if you do what I do and you kind of build things iteratively and you you build them, you know, through test first design, um, but you're not kind of specking out and planning the entire. Um, architecture from the ground up, which which I actually think is the more time effective uh, way to do it is to, to get to writing code. Um, if you do it this way, you often will kind of find that, uh, okay, you've implemented qubits and you've in implemented quantum gates, uh, but when you go to implement a, a quantum circuit, you actually need a generalization of, uh, of its constituent parts. Uh, so we know we already had qubits, those were uh, maybe I'll show what we the example we had in the README. Uh, right, a qubit is just a quantum bit. It's just a thing that can be a one or a zero or a superposition of the two. Uh, so a, a reasonable uh, qubit is one over root two times the sum of the zero state and the sum of the one state, uh, where the, the zero state just means if you measure me, you'll always get back zero. The one state just means if you measure me, you'll always get back one. And so, uh, you know, this, this qubit state is basically saying I'm in a 50-50 superposition of uh, the zero and the one state. Uh, and in order to work out what this 50-50 uh, position corresponds to, or, or like what it means practically, when you measure it, uh, you're going to measure zero with the square of whatever the term is that's in front of it. So that's one over root two and you're going to measure one uh, with the, the square of the term that's in front of it, which again is one over uh, one over root two, so the squared is going to be one half. So you measure 50-50, you'll measure zero, or you'll measure one. Uh, and in general, um, the, a single qubit has to live on the, on the unit sphere in complex, uh, in, it's called the block sphere, I think. Uh, so it's it's represented as a, a matrix. Uh, do I have an example matrix here? Not really, um, but it's represented as a, or a, not a matrix, a vector, a two dimensional vector uh, that gives the two coefficients, the one that's, that's for zero, the one that's for one. Um, and those have to 
uh, alpha squared plus beta squared uh, has to has to get you to one. So it, it lives on this unit um, sphere. And the reason it lives on the unit sphere is because uh, you better get um, a, a total probability of one at the end of the day, right? You can't you can't get zero 40 percent of the time and one 20 percent of the time. Uh, then what do you get the other 40 percent of the time? Uh, likewise, you can't get zero 180 percent of the time. Doesn't make sense. Um, so uh, qubits are just two dimensional complex vectors. Uh, or they can be represented like this, um, where the, the coefficients are on the unit sphere. Okay, those are qubits. Uh, we did those in, in, in part one, and they work, they work great. I think we haven't touched them since. Uh, but when we started doing quantum circuits last time, the uh, quantum gates that we had set up previously uh, that we had used to demonstrate quantum interference, it became clear that those were not going to be sufficient and we sort of knew this even when we we built them and and that was fine um and and the trouble that we ran into last time was that the quantum gate um just was a was a two by two matrix and it could only take in um a single qubit and output a single qubit which is why it was a two by two matrix you needed a two by two matrix to uh, multiply by a two by two vector uh, to get one back and in fact, it's a unitary matrix because it has to uh, ensure that you're not adding or, or subtracting probability from the total. You still, after you operate on the on on the qubit, you have to get back a qubit, not something that could be, uh, you know, only forty percent somewhere. So that worked when we were doing one qubit gates, uh, but we actually want to be able to do arbitrary. Uh, numbers of qubits going into and out of our circuit, uh, like when we do Shor's algorithm. Um, for factoring numbers, it's, you use a circuit that's like on the order of the thing you're, you like find a divisor and then you do something that's like on that order. It's somewhere between one and two times, um, that divisor, that's how many inputs and outputs you need if memory serves. Um, and so we definitely want to be able to have more than just, uh, a circuit that has one qubit quantum gates in it. Now you can compose quantum gates um, into uh, more complex ones. So, so a circuit is just going to be a bunch of quantum gates that are kind of organized a certain way. Um, think of a circuit diagram in, uh, in normal circuits. Um, those gates though can be, uh, you, can, you can create bigger gates from smaller gates. Um, but you always need at least a quantum gate, uh, a, a one qubit quantum gate, and some two qubit quantum gates. Um, and so we just decided last time, let's let's just create a generic quantum gate that has some generic square matrix that uh, represents the computations that it's going to do. And we spent some time implementing that last time. Um, and it also now runs against a register, um, where a register is just a... It's like a register in your in your CPU, right? It's just a bunch of qubits. Uh, it's the quantum analog of a of a uh, of a register in regular computing. And I guess for consistency, I should probably call it a quantum register. It also occurs to me that I'm writing quantum over and over again in in these types, and they probably don't um, actually all need to be have quantum in front of them since it's implied. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it uh, for now, but maybe I'll get tired of typing it over and over again. We will see. Um, sweet. So, uh, so that's where we got to. We had kind of finished refactoring uh, the quantum gate into something that could uh, take multiple multiple qubits in and spit multiple qubits out. Um, but there were a few tests that were still failing, or we were still not quite able to compile. Um, so we had taken this, we had this uh, test before that, that sort of demonstrates quantum interference. Um, and, and we want to re-implement this as a proper circuit rather than just by creating the, the gates ourselves. Um, but we're missing one function here uh, where we used to be able to measure a qubit. Well, we still can measure a qubit, uh, but now we've changed everything so that we don't output qubits from our quantum gates anymore. We output... Um, 
quantum registers. And so we need to be able to measure a quantum register. So let's start there. Um, cool, quantum register is here. And we will create a function. It will be called measure. And it will take itself. Um, and you don't have to measure every qubit in a quantum circuit, which is interesting. You can only, you know, if you want to, you can isolate the qubits and only measure one or the other of them. Um, I think we probably will want to be able to do that at some point, uh, but for now, I'm just going to assume that we measure everything uh, for the sake of getting this test to pass. And so GitHub is being helpful here because we already wrote a really similar one. Whoa, OBS just yelled at me. Hopefully I didn't uh, just drop. Uh, seems like I'm dropping frames, sorry about that. Um, hopefully it's not too bad. Um, cool, so we've implemented this measure function. Um, all we do, when so when you measure a register, just like if you, just like if you measure a qubit, um, it's going to collapse the, uh, it's gonna collapse the register into the state that you measure. Um, so let's see here, we're going to randomly go through, yeah, I don't like this function that uh, GitHub tried to write for me, so we're gonna get rid of that. Um, what do we want to do if we're measuring a qubit? We want to pick out for each for each qubit, we want to pick out a measurement. Um, so we need to return, we should have the same function signature we, we had for the qubit um, dot measure, which which returned a measurement, which is just a, either a zero or a one, and the measured qubit. Uh, so we wanna do something similar here. So we're gonna make this a pub type so that we can access it from our quantum gate file. We are going to use um, qubit and measurement. And we will also import matrix square matrix. Um, measurement is private. Didn't I just update that? Pub type. Okay. Okay. That worked this time. Hopefully I'm back and Twitch is still saying I'm unstable. That's disappointing. Sorry about that. Um, but we will soldier on. Okay, so from uh, when we measure a register, it should return um, measurement and a self, um, and it's no longer just gonna be one measurement, it's going to be a vector of measurements. Um, in fact, we could decide we wanted to return a register. Oh, we are returning a register. Okay, and then just a vector of the, the different outcomes seems fine. Um, and we'll just go through each, um, looks like I'm disconnecting again. Sorry about this, not sure what's going on with my connection today. A little bit. 
bit strange. Um, okay, but continuing to soldier on. Um, so uh, we have, we want to go through each qubit and measure it and then return the appropriate new register. So let's say let result uh, resulting register um, be a quantum register And we're gonna to need to populate that from a unit vector or a vector. So I guess actually um, we'll just have this be a vec of qubits. And then measurements, same story. And we'll go through each one. We will get the qubit. We will measure the qubit. We will push the measurements onto uh, the resulting measurements. Um, we will push the resulting, uh, the resulting new qubits. What's new qubit? New qubit, yep. Uh, so the resulting new qubit we will push onto the resulting register. Um, we will not sum anything. I don't know what the sum is doing here. And then at the end of this, we will return the um, the resulting measurements and a new and a new um, quantum register. And that's just generalizing the idea of measuring a single qubit. Okay, I think that should work. Um, I have a few more of these. And if second measurement equals zero. Uh, what is second measurement? It's a vec of U8. Uh, yeah, so these are, this is just gonna be a one, um, a one column vector. So before this was just a qubit, now it's just, it's gonna be a one qubit register. So we just index into the first, um, the first element. Okay, my stream seems to be doing a little better bitrate wise, so hopefully it stabilizes. Okay. And likewise, here we just index into the first element. Um, sweet. And what's this? Yes, I think last time at the end I was um, trying to work out what I wanted the types to look like for um, comparing registers with a single qubit. Like I wanted it to automatically become a single qubit register. Um, and afterwards I was thinking about it and it, it, I think it makes sense to just pass in the whole qubit because the qubit's copy rather than passing in a reference. So um, I think that works pretty well. Okay, and we are, um, looks like we're compiling now. So let's cargo test and see how we did. Okay, so our, um, our Hadamard gate um, test is working, or our, our measurement interference test is working again now. So we've successfully generalized uh, quantum gates, um, and in case you weren't 
here for it. Uh, the way that this this works is essentially we're we're demonstrating the difference between a circuit, a quantum circuit, where you measure. Well, it's not a true quantum circuit yet. It's just a bunch of gates. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna do this as a quantum circuit also in a minute, uh, where you you take the state of a qubit that's always zero, you apply a Hadamard gate to it, which essentially rotate, rotates it into that 50-50 state I was talking about before. You measure it, you Hadamard it again, and the output you get is 50% a, a zero versus 50% a one. And that's because when you measure it, you either get a 50% or a zero, and then when you try to rotate that into 50-50 state, um, it still ends up being 50-50, 0 and 1. Uh, con uh, on the other hand, if you do the exact same circuit, but you don't measure it in the middle, so you just take the 0 state, you had to it twice without measuring in between, um, then 100% of the time, you will get back the 0 state, because you've just, you've rotated the pure zero state into 50-50 and then back again. And there was no measurement. There was there was no time when anything collapsed. Um, so uh, good to see that test working. That makes me feel pretty comfortable that um, I have correctly generalized some things. Okay, let's get commit that. Um, Generalize uh, quantum gate, or I think I committed last time, so this is probably just implement measurement for quantum register. And I just lost my connection again. Uh, this is really unfortunate. Not sure what that's about. Um, maybe I'll try leaving and resetting my Wi-Fi and seeing if that helps and coming back and hopefully it will be better. Uh, let's try that because this is pretty miserable at the moment. So hopefully I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Okay, we are back up. Hopefully this works better. Um, not sure what was going on with my Wi-Fi that I pay a lot of money for and would like to work 100% of the time. Um, so I'll be investigating that later, but reset it for now and uh, hopefully won't be dropping any more frames, fingers crossed. Um, okay, so let's get back to it. Um, so we got the, uh, we got the measurement demo working let's go to our quantum circuits um and we had commented out a whole bunch of tests uh because they were not compiling which is fine uh so let's comment those back in and see what we can do here oh we didn't even we hadn't even started writing the quantum circuit uh functions yet but what we had done is written some tests uh so we want to be able to add gates to the test um and in particular now we need to specify how many, um, how big the ident so the identity gate is just the gate that's essentially a wire, right? It takes whatever qubit you pass in and it gives you back whatever qubit you passed in. But now that these can be different sizes, different numbers of qubits, um, we need to specify uh, how how big that quantum gate is in terms of qubits. Uh, and then we can pass it in and check that it comes out correctly. Uh, similar story here. So we want to be able to create a serial quantum circuit. Um, so for that, what I mean by that is just uh, a series of gates connected with one another. So similar to the uh, to the, the circuit I showed before that, that was just implemented as, as a bunch of gates. Um, we're going to do that within an actual proper quantum circuit struct here. Uh, so we're saying the quantum circuit is a one qubit quantum circuit. Um, we're adding a Hadamard, we're adding a knot, we're adding a Hadamard. Uh, so now it's like three gates and it takes one qubit in. Um, and then, oh, these got messed up because 
they were commented out so they didn't get refactored. That's fine. Um, and let's import it. Okay. Um, cool. And so these should all be where, and we actually don't need to even say singleton anymore because we set it up uh, so that almost equal can just take a qubit and it will automatically work out that if you're trying to give almost equals a, a single qubit, it should be a register with one qubit in it. Um, okay. And then same story here. Oh no, not same story here. Uh, this just needs to be quantum register. And cool. And then we will do, so this is a two qubit quantum circuit. And so the idea here is we're going to do a Hadamard gate uh, against the first qubit, the zeroth qubit, um, and the Hadamard gate against, uh, so I guess both incoming two qubits and then we'll C not them together, which is a controlled not gate. We haven't implemented that yet. We'll do that next. Um, but a controlled not gate is basically, um, it's it takes two qubits of input uh, and the, f the first qubit controls whether the second qubit gets knotted. Uh, so it gets inverted, right? If it was a one, it becomes a zero. If it was a 50-50 split, it becomes a 50-50 split, but phase rotated and, and so on. If you don't know what that means, it doesn't matter too, too tremendously. Uh, the point is you should think of it as two qubits, one of which controls whether or not the other one is, is a not gate. Um, so we're gonna implement that a second. We can go into to more, more detail to what that is. Um, Cool, and the other things we want to implement are reversing the circuit and actually running the circuit. Uh, but I guess we're already running the circuit here a bunch of times, so probably don't need a specific test for that. Uh, but I do want to be able to re reverse the circuit because like one thing I'm hoping to get to today is the quantum Fourier transform and the inverse quantum Fourier transform. And one of them is just the inverse of the other, or the revert, you just reverse it. So uh, that would be cool to be able to do. Um, okay, checking on my bit rate looks fine. Cool. Um, hopefully that wasn't too annoying for people watching. Um, sweet. Okay, so let's, uh, I guess before we do the quantum circuit itself, let's just implement the CNOT function. Um, as a quantum gate. So on quantum gate, we're going to have a function called C knots and it'll return a self. Um, and it's just gonna be a square matrix uh, that I'm going to look up um, I'm gonna look up what the matrix is because I don't remember. Ooh, GitHub is trying to tell me that it knows. Do I believe it? Do I believe that GitHub knows what a C not gate looks like in its matrix representation? Well, let's see. It's all ones and zeros, which seems right to me. And they are in places. So this is trying to say um, let's see here. This is uh, row. This is zero zero. This is one zero. Um, this is one. This is two zero. And this is three zero. So let's compare this to the book. Um, and see what we have. Switch the view. Load. 
to the PDF. Yeah, because like, so the, the neat thing, and I guess this is true of regular um, circuits also, um, but I never really thought about it in, in this light, but it's so convenient to represent quantum gates as, as matrices. Um, uh, so let's go page 66. And of course it's not the PDF page 66, it's the book page 66. It's not even close to the PDF page 66. Um, and to what extent does it list out that matrix? I remember seeing it. Uh, I can also just look it up on Wikipedia, I imagine. Maybe that's faster. Control not gate. Could also work it out for myself what it is, but that really doesn't seem efficient. Let's see. There we go. Is that the matrix? No. That's the matrix. Okay, here we go. So it's basically the identity in the top left corner and the inverse in the bottom right corner and zeros in the middle. So let's compare that to what we have in our code. Uh, so we have zero, zero. We have Don't I think this should be a one? Unless I'm wrong about from back. Yeah, so I, I feel like, um, I feel like GitHub got this completely wrong. Um, let's write a test though to check uh, so let's say test let's say test c not gate um, and let's just do all the basic operations that would just be like the bitwise operations um, so what do we want we want assert equals um, Um, we want the, okay, let's see not be quantum gate, C not, and assert equals C not um, applied to, uh, now it's gonna be a two, it's gonna take a quantum register with two elements. So we're gonna say, Quantum register, um, new normalize, and let's go ahead and pop this out into its own thing. So let's let um, zero zero be quantum register fill um, qubit basis zero. Um, Two and likewise, we'll do one one. We'll be filling it with ones. Um, let zero one be here. We have to do the new normalize. Dropping frames again, aren't I? I think I went down again. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Sorry, guys. It's really unfortunate. 
Um, we're just going to stick with it. Maybe it's something in my, in my neighborhood. Um, okay, new normalize, we need a vector. Um, what does new normalize take again? Just the D vector. Uh, D vector from vec, and this will be, um, so let zero be complex zero and let one be complex one. This will be zero one. Okay, so if we apply zero, zero to, if we apply C naught to zero, zero, we expect to get zero, zero back because the zero means we don't invert anything and then we expect to get zero. Um, so zero, zero. If we apply it to uh, zero one, we expect to get zero one back because again, we're the, the controlled bit is the first bit and we're saying don't invert and so one stays the same. Um, uh, one zero should result in one one because now we are inverting, so we invert the zero. OBS is telling me I'm drawing, dropping frames again. And one one is going to be one zero, because we invert, we're saying we do invert the one into a zero. Okay. And this, doesn't seem right. It seems like this should be a one. This should be a zero. Um, this should be a one and this should be a one. Whoops, almost. We don't want an I, we want a one. Okay. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and replace this with complex one. And we can replace this with complex zero. Okay. Um, complex zero is not found. Did I just use complex zero? Seem to be found here. Oh, we need the trait imported. Okay. Cool, everything is passing. Um, I'm once again going to uh, comment out these quantum circuit tests that are going to not compile. And, oops. Um, Why are we not 
happy with me. Let's see any errors there. Uh, cargo test. Okay, cargo test. Uh, the bar checker doesn't like me. Oh, because in quantum gate, I'm doing something bad. Uh, what am I doing? I'm reusing the C not gate over and over again, um, which it doesn't like because it's not copy, which is fair. So let's just clone all of these for the tests. Um, oh, it's also, it also doesn't like that I'm reusing the vectors. It's kind of annoying. I understand why these aren't copy, but it's a little bit annoying. They're dynamic, and so they're basically like unbounded arrays. Um, okay, and test C not gate fails. So, what to do about that? Let's see. Um, where does it fail? Okay, the very first one fails. So, quantum register has some crazy value in it. Well, not some crazy value. It has the one over the square root of two in it. Um, where is that coming from? How do you get one over the square root of two? from a matrix of ones and zeros. Um, okay, you get it because these are, this is a normalized vector. Um, or it's a normalized matrix. So something is wrong about the matrix I put in. Try to figure out what. So we expect this to be one, one. We expect this to be two, two. And we expect this to be three, three. But that's not what we wanted. Um, we wanted this. Three, two, and uh, that's what we wanted. Still fails, still, still giving me back these one over root twos in here. Um, which doesn't seem right. So why is it getting renormalized? Like essentially what's happening is that some, is that it, it, I suspect what's happening is that it's trying to make this into a unitary matrix um, and it ends up scaling everything to do that. But it should already be a unitary matrix so I wouldn't expect anything to get scaled. Let's um, let's test C not matrix so C not matrix um Mm, 
into an error. Get me the matrix out of it, and then, uh, and then I want to get the zeroth element and make sure that that's a one. doesn't have an inner into inner function yet uh, so let's implement that uh, wait is it that or is it square matrix that needs a into inner function I think it's square matrix that needs it Hey, Lobo wins. How you doing? Welcome. Sorry for the uh, instability today. I'm trying to work that out. How's everything going? Um, okay, so within Matrix, we just need a way to get at the uh, matrix that's contained within matrix, within square matrix, um, which is just going to be this type. Actually, I don't love doing it that way. Let's just, instead of doing that, let's just have a pub function get, um, and just get each element individually. So let's get i and j and return a complex number. Um, and it's a complex number made of F32s. And I just dropped again. Um, and uh, this should just be that matrix. How do I get the specific elements? Can I just say I, J? Oh, interesting. Um. We'll just work out what the index is ourself. Um, so the index is going to be um, what's it going to be? It's going to be something plus j. It's going to be I mod self dot size plus J. No, I times self dot size plus J. So now if it's the zeroth row and the jth column, then we'll get the right number. If it's the third row and the zeroth column, we'll get the right number and so on. So that should work. And now in our test, rather than doing into inner, we will just say get. And 
that should work a little better. Um, all right, and let's do the same thing for the other ones we expect to be ones. So we expect one, one, um, two, three, and three, two to all be ones. And they're not. Even zero, zero is 0 0.5. Why is that? Surely this is unitary. Um, from back normalize. Let's just run that test and check. Um, so the point is that the, this we would expect to already be normal or unitary, I should say. Um, test C not matrix is already unitary. And we'll get rid of this, the square matrix stuff. Um, and we will just check the, the, the D matrix. Um, let's see not unit. Um, D matrix complex F32 new no from back Type this guy. Uh, can I just say? So we don't. We just want it to be the D matrix from back. Function takes three. Oh right, because it needs to be in both directions. Okay. Four four it gets a back. Three found two. It's a comma. All right, progress has been made, and then complex zero and one don't exist. But we can import the traits. Okay. And it doesn't know what type C not is. That's fine. We'll sort that out in a second. Um, and then we'll, we want to assert C not is unitary. It's in unitary, is unitary is not a function. Um, so dot norm should be very close to 1.0. Um, so C not dot, dot, C not dot norm should be very close to one. Oh, and 
our back in this situation, which we saw before the D matrix of complex F32s. Okay, so I'm kind of expecting this test to fail. Um, test C not matrix fails. And why are we failing? We're failing because the size of this guy is two, apparently. Don't really believe you. Um, okay, I want to check something else. I want to check. So this returned 0.5, so that already was failing my test, but I want to see if the ones and zeros are not in the right place. Um, somehow. Also comment this one out. Zero point five one. How can this not be a unitary matrix? Very confused. Very confused. So, okay, so what's what's the next question here? So my strong um, suspicion is that I'm misunderstanding the composition of this matrix given I'm instantiating it like this, but I feel like the test I just ran does a pretty good job verifying that that's not the case. You can see my internet dropping dramatically right now. Um, so then there's the other question that the, is the L2 norm of the matrix what I mean when I mean when I check for unitarity and I'm pretty sure it is I think of the L2 norm as being um
they preserve norms. The Euclidean norm of a vector is not the same thing as the, okay. I think that's my problem. So unitarity, the norm of a matrix is the L2 norm is not the same thing as um, as it being unitary. The definition of it being unitary is if its conjugate transpose itself, so it's inverse. So if I want to normalize If I'm going to normalize the matrix, what's the best way for me to do that? Can I use the determinant instead? Does a unitary matrix have determinant one? Yes, it does. Okay, let's try that. Um, so if this were the determinant, then would this test pass? Oh, the norm of its determinant. test passes. Cool. Okay, so square matrix, new normalize. Um, interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, so we don't quite want to do this. We instead want to say let normalizer Let's see here. Let determinant norm be matrix dot determinant dot norm. And then let normalizer be one over the determinant norm. And then we do new normalize. Um, normalizer times the matrix. And what happened here? Absolute value. Absolute value. Why is this absolute value? 64. Didn't I do this before? Normalizer times complex one. My other question is why this matrix determinant absolute why 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 is it absolute value whereas down whereas in here In that other test, it was dot norm. C not as a matrix, determinant returns T, and then it's norm.
confused. Can this be norm? Yes, it can. Okay. But it doesn't like it. <coughs> oh, you need an algebra normed. Okay. Um, so now, does C not gate work? It does not. It's still failing. Square back from vector normalize. New normalize. So what's different? What's different? This is a D matrix of complex numbers. We go from that vector. We compute the determinant, we compute the norm, and it's equal to one. Okay. Same story here. New normalize computes the determinant of the norm, we take its inverse, and now we scale down I guess I shouldn't be using new normalized there, I should just be using new New unchecked, new, how do I do a unit matrix? Um, Okay, so now I have a new problem, which is that my my unit matrix just doesn't really have the definition that I want it to have. Like the L2 norm of a matrix is not, does not make it unitary. Or so it seems from the definition. So I guess, I guess I want to get rid of these. I, think I want to get rid of the new function altogether. I think I want to make it not hold a unit matrix. Um, And I will test my own. That's still right. New, well, like new unitary. Um, and this will just be self.
again, there are just a couple places where we no longer have to go into the inner matrix. And we'll just enforce that the matrix is unitary on construction, which is fine. Okay. Oh, hey, it's your boy, God. I like your, uh, I like your name. Do I think quantum computing will be a threat to cybersecurity in the future? Um, my suspicion is that the cybersecurity community can will be able to anticipate quantum computing enough that it won't be at least in the in the like obviously scary sense where like RSA encryption is still used but people have quantum computers and are breaking it all the time like I think that basically won't happen except for people who like have really bad security um I think there are probably a lot of subtler cases there, right? So I, basically I think my answer is yes, um, because regular computers are a threat to cybersecurity, right? And if regular computers are a threat to cybersecurity and quantum computing does better than that, then quantum computers will probably be a threat to cybersecurity. But we'll just go into that, um, we'll just go into, uh, the same kind of arms race that, that we go into anyway uh, with computers. And I don't think it's like gonna, it's gonna change a lot of specific things, but I don't think it's like a huge phase change for the, for the industry. Um, Wizard A AYZ1 says, hello, you have a question. Where can you trust and save your code online? GitHub, GitHub's a pretty good, good place to do it. Um, I use GitHub and it works great. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Sorry, I, I realize I'm, I'm dropping some frames today. Um, so apologies if uh, if I drop frames or even drop the stream. I think there's something going on in my, my neighborhood with the Wi-Fi. Um, it's been super windy here. Sometimes that can, that can cause problems. Um, so bear with me. Um, okay, so let's finish. Self that matrix. Can't multiply a matrix of complex numbers with a unit matrix. Really? Okay. Let's do inner. Does it? And can't subtract. Uh, oh, this still needs to get cloned. And these still need to get cloned. Okay. We doing any better? Sort of. So test C not gate is now getting us all the way to, it's getting us through most of the test now, or at least some of the test, but still we have these one over root twos showing up, 0.707. Um, where's the failure exactly? Okay. So why, why are we getting that? Take a look at the apply function. New normalize. Uh, 
our matrix times our vector. Seems fine. And we've tested other gates, and the other gates are working right. So it seems unlikely that it's the actual apply function. Um. Our values are correct. And so if we just do the matrix multiplication quickly, like let's just make sure that we don't, that we aren't just bad at math, which is always a real possibility. Um, okay, the C naught gate looks like this. If we have zero, zero, then that would be one, zero, one, zero, which is gonna be one, zero, zero. Wait, hang on a second. One, zero, one, zero. Am I not understanding this right? Zero, zero should go to zero, zero. If I have a two qubit input, that would be one, zero, one, zero. If I take this matrix and I multiply it by one, zero, one, zero, I get one, zero, zero zero, don't I? Am I crazy? The third coordinate would be zero times one plus zero times zero plus zero times one plus one times zero. Confuse. Okay. I'm confused, I'm confused, I'm confused. Let's make sure that I believe that I understand the way that the matrices work. Representation, they live on a block sphere. You put 0, 0, 0, 1, and so on into a vector. The identity gate, C naught. Check if I'm crazy. So if I if I just want to do the matrix multiplication here to make sure I'm not totally getting this wrong. V zero zero. Oh, 
Oh, hang on. I get what I'm doing wrong. I'm representing my matrix or my my register incorrectly. A vector representation of qubits. So the way that I had been thinking about this is wrong. I had been trying to stack the two qubits on top of one another. So I was thinking that the zero, like zero, like one zero is the zero state. Is it a single qubit that's always going to be zero? I was thinking that zero zero was going to be one zero one zero. It's not, which makes sense because the probabilities it's 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 the probability corresponding to the zero zero state well the square root of that the probability of the uh state corresponding to the zero one state and so on these are basis vectors so i need to rethink how i'm um i need to rethink how i am encoding my register is the problem. All right, learning things. We are learning things. So, in the register, Does that mean that I have two to the n basis vectors for an n qubit state? So if I have, an, if I have a four qubit state, then in classical computing, I can have two to the four to 16 different values. Yes, okay. Okay, so we did this wrong. By which, of course, I mean I did this wrong. Um, hmm. One length one. Okay, so I want to change the name of this function to qubits and qubits. Um, I want to also be able to say dot length. I don't want that to be two here. Uh, this is also two. This one should be four. Twitch and OBS are telling me that I am once again dropping frames and I once again apologize. Um, all right. So let's do this refactor and then I'm, I'm just gonna get out of here after that because uh, my internet is clearly doing something awful today and I gotta figure out what that is. Um, okay. So it is a still a vector Singleton is fine. Um, and you can fill the vector yourself. But so this needs to be to the log two and what's the issue here? View 
use of an unstable library feature. Okay, we'll take a look at that in a moment. Um, pub function length is just going to be self.register.length. Um, and then get qubit. Get qubit, is that fair? Is that a thing I even want to permit? Surely I want to be able to just measure one qubit. The vector is a linear combination of probability to be in each of the classical states. So what I want actually is to be able to get the probability that a certain that we are in a certain state. which I can do by looking up the associated element. Because um, I can't actually get, like, how would I get the state of one particular qubit? I'm not even sure that's a, a doable thing. Because you can have a state that's not expressible in a linear combination of. That's not true. Every state needs to be expressible in a linear combination of basis vectors. The basis vectors are the different classical units. If I wanted to know the quantum state of one qubit, What would that mean? I think I can't ask that question because that question, that qubit could be entangled with a bunch of other qubits. Um, so I can't ask this question. I can say get, I can say get state coefficient or something. I'm gonna get rid of that. Get vector seems fine. The rest of this is okay. Measuring, so if I want to measure from the register, I can no longer do it qubit by qubit. Zero, zero is the probability of being in the zero, zero state. 
So if I want a measurement, then I just do one Um, I just say, uh, just do this same thing, except that then I need to work out given this range, which state I wind up in. Um, so something like, um, let's so far, let me so far be zero. And then basically the idea is to divide up the number line, divide up the interval from zero to one and work out which basis vector we're at. So for um, coefficient in self dot get vector. Um, pull this probability so far. And then once we get there, we now this is totally wrong. Um So, if our random number is less than our probability so far, then we are in the, the correct basis. This is the basis vector to collapse to, basis state. Um, So the new the new register is going to be um, basis i. We'll just say let mute i be zero and i plus equal one. Um, and the measurement will be be what?
just I. Except that we need it as a vector of ones and zeros. happens and if we get to here then we should panic um, the measurement vector is unitary uh, and so probability so far should count up to 1.0, which is greater than random number. Okay. So we'll deal deal with those in a couple minutes. Um, okay, and so let's think about this. Quantum register, singleton, um, we can't get a qubit now. What we want is, because there's no guarantee that you can sensibly talk about the individual qubits within a register because they're all interfering with one another. Um, so instead what we're gonna do is get the probability, we're gonna get the coefficient, I guess, coefficient associated with Um, zero and it's going to be zero. And the coefficient associated with one should be one. This coefficient should be one over four, which is just 0.5. And um, this would be seven five d square roots and then here it's going to be a little different um, so we're going to have four of these now okay coefficient and we're gonna have um, complex one. Let's see here, the, so if we fill the register with zero, zero, then it should be one and these should be zero. Okay. Um. 
Um, let's say, let's do this a little bit better. We'll say, um, I and zero to self dot length. And we'll say let coefficient be um, self dot get coefficient i. And let's go ahead and say self dot get um, probability. And then get coefficient um, so we just need the ice term in the register but we'll clone it we don't have to it's already copy and then for get probability, we need the square of the, uh, this should just be an F32, and we need the square of the norm. Good. Okay. All right, and then we need a basis function. Also, our fill function is wrong, right? Yeah, our fill function is wrong. Uh, so let's do the basis function. Um, and for that, we just populate the ith. Oh, we need n also. and rows and elements and then for fill um what to say about that i think i'm just going to get rid of this function i don't think it actually has that much semantic meaning basis and elements is going to be self dot length to binary we still need to implement get coefficient needs to be complex one times 0.5 this needs to be complex one times 0.75 square root of 0.75 um and for the register it kind of does have semantic meaning. But I don't want to. Do I want to fill it with qubits? I guess it does have semantic meaning. It's complicated though, because filling it with qubits means that, okay, you can represent, like you can, obviously you can initialize, what if I just say fill zeros? Um, and fill ones, I think would be a little bit saner. We 
be all zeros. And we'll do something similar for all ones. Um, and all ones would be what? Um, is it just one, 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 one? And it should just be zero, 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 yeah. No, it's not. No, the coefficient that correspond. No, this this can't be right. It's got to be only the third coefficient has anything in it because it's this case. It's all ones would be one uh, would be the ket one one which is only the last coefficient populated. Okay. Okay. This makes sense. Let's implement this, and then I'm going to give up on my internet and hopefully uh, come back tomorrow when things are a little bit, a little bit saner. Um, function fill zeros. Is that what I call all zeros? All zeros. Um, and elements, spaces is zero, good. And all ones. Um, and this is going to be an elements minus one. Okay. Um, log two. Checked log two dot expect um, register size is not a power of two. Fine, I will your feature Just say features in log here. This is a thing. No. Um. Okay, and then the last thing I need is self to binary to binary vector. Why am I not just returning a U size? Let's just return a number. Let's just return a Um, 
is a U8 ever not big enough? Maybe. Okay. So, fill doesn't work, but all zeros does. All zero, all ones. Um, but now this isn't even right. This should just be uh, quantum register basis. I don't think that's right either. Or number of qubits is what that should be, but two, zero. And the others are the same story here. So I want this to be the number of qubits and qubits, in which case I want to let um, state vector length be two power of i. whatever it needs to be. Um, state vector length. And this isn't right either. No, it is, it is, okay. So that's fine. And then all zeros, the number of qubits. And all ones, the number of qubits. But then this needs to be So goal, okay, I'm gonna wrap up. Um, this has been kind of a mess today with all of my uh, internet issues and um, and <laughs> I, I think we needed to need a, a, a pretty big refactor of the quantum register because uh, I, I guess I fundamentally didn't understand uh, quite how the, the register was structured as a as a vector. Um, so I think the, the cool thing today, in spite of all of the difficulties, uh, was learning that the quantum register isn't just a stack of qubits, right? So when you look at a circuit diagram, it looks like it's a stack of qubits. Um, if we have a circuit diagram, like your instinct is to put a qubit here and a qubit here. But that's, that's not how the matrix representation works. The, the matrix re representation is saying, uh, look, we have to have the probability weights of each of the classical results. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. We have to have the probability weights of those have to add up. 
um, and then we operate on those. And so our register is a, a, a list of uh, complex numbers that handles that fact for us. Um, and that's, that's quite a bit different. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm gonna end here. Um, next time we'll come back and finish doing this refactor um, and then hopefully we'll be ready for our, our, our quantum circuit from there um, and generalizing from there. So again, sorry today about the, um, about the internet issues. I'll look into those and hopefully uh, we'll be better tomorrow. I'll be back at uh, 1 p.m. EST tomorrow. I uh, hope everybody has a good day in the meantime. Take care.